We were recording in, in Atlantic Studios in New York, and in the other studio were the Stones, right? And this was when people hadn't really cleaned up their act <laughs> in these days. Uh, and Atlantic Records was uh, being run at that time by the Ertigan brothers. And so when anyway, we were all in the studio, the situation completely normal. There were a few joints going on and things. Ahmed came in, rushed in the door suddenly. He said, listen, guys, the cops are on their way up. Give me all your drugs, uh, everything you've got. And he said, get this place cleaned up. Right, so it was sort of all the people who didn't take things and so on. Suddenly, we're producing little bits of this and that from here and there. Ashtrays were emptied, people spraying the air, you know, fit up the air conditioning, yeah. polishing things and everything, and sitting <coughs> like this. And of course, you'd gone into the stones as well, right? Yeah. So we are all waiting for the cops to come rushing in. Nothing happens, nothing happens. I'm going to have a look out into the hall. So I go out, I look through this little glass panel into the hallway, and there's the receptionist guy sitting there reading the paper like completely normal, completely calm. So I happened to open the door, look, there's nothing, nobody, and I went out and I said, hey, Mac, that was his name. I said, Are the cops coming up. And he said, cops? He said, what cops? And I said, I said, I met came in and told everybody the police were on the way up. Where is our mate? And he said, oh, he's gone to a party in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking it all. <laughs> that was a, that's that was a that's brilliant. <laughs> true story. Yeah, yeah, true story. Went off. God knows what he got from the store studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have had an effect on him because uh, I got signed to Atlanta Records. As well, <laughs> to, to our mate, good. You can thank us then. Yeah, it was your fault. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it was me, um, Mark Brzezicki. You know, do you know Mark, drummer Mark, from Big Country? He used to oh, be in Pro I don't know him, but I know yeah. who he is, yeah. yeah. Um, and Pete's, Pete Townsend's brother, Simon, and um, yeah. we'd been rehearsing and uh, recording for quite a while, and we got invited, actually, by... We were out in Amer America looking for a deal, really, doing mm. us a few gigs. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you've just said something about Armit, so I'm sure it's, he's dead anyway. <laughs> Bless yeah, him. yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's yeah. A, He's oh, he a, was brilliant. He's yeah. a genius, isn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. And a legend. But uh, he, um, I think it was towards the end of his career, really, because he'd somehow got a message through to the band and said that he wanted, he'd been, he'd been, he'd received a demo tape and really liked what he'd heard. And we were meant to be doing a gig somewhere um, in New York. I can't remember the name of the venue right now. Uh, and he said, You've got a record deal, but you have to cancel everybody else that's coming, because I know Warners are coming, CBS, blah, 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 blah. Mm. We are offering your record deal, but cancel everybody else. So we did, and he, he didn't turn up at the gig, but he sent some, uh, some of his you know, yeah. cronies or whatever, uh, and we got offered a record deal. The next day, we went to Atlantic Records. It was bizarre. It was like one of those pinch yourself moments, yeah, yeah. because we were struggling, and suddenly there's two limos turned up outside our hotel yeah, yeah. and took us to Atlantic Records, and we got in the lift and went up right up to the top to his office. Wow. And it was the most fantastic moment, because I'll never forget this. Uh, he had a great big poster of Pete behind him in his mm. chair. Uh, and he said, oh, I didn't even know Pete had a brother, you know. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've, you know, I'm his youngest brother. He said, yeah, he said, I, I like what I heard on this tape. You know, he said, um, he said, you know, uh, you know, one of these days, uh, I mean, I, I think he mentioned you guys, mentioned the average white man, mm. mentioned mm. Steve Ferroni, yeah, mentioned, yeah. Uh, mentioned Phil Collins. One of my favorite dramas is Steve uh, Ferroni and Phil Collins. I'm like, sorry, Phil's, Phil really likes our stuff, actually. Yeah, He's, uh, yeah. In fact, I've done a lot of um, stuff with Phil, you know, when we do the Prince's Trust concerts oh, and yeah. stuff. He said, I've always been the drummer along with Phil. He said, yeah, you'll meet him one day. <laughs> he said, he said yeah, I, yeah, we know him. Yeah, he's yeah. a friend of mine. Yeah, but you, when you meet him, man... It's like, <laughs> and I was thinking, this is going nowhere, this conversation. It's no. going nowhere at all. We're about to get signed by these guys. Anyway, we put this tape on, and the first tra track that came out, he said, this song, he said, is a hit song. This is going to be a number one record in America. And it went through 28 different tunes. And in those days, it was on cassette, the song, yeah, yeah. turning over cassette. And the song came back on again. Same mix, the same tune. went, don't know about this one. <laughs> 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 Danny, this is, this is not going to be on the album. <laughs> and I don't think it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you're a legend, Darby. But... Yeah. But yeah. just hang on a second. Yeah. But anyway, you can't knock what he's done. Oh, no. 
least, uh, at least there's somebody around the record company who had to written some bloody songs. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and discovered some incredible artists. Yeah. So, God bless him. <laughs>